What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel on behalf of Brit. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Brittany, and today we are having Girl Talk, a new episode of my Life as a Braider series where I discuss any tips and tricks that may help new braiders. So today's topic will be short and sweet. I'm just discussing comfortability. So any ways or tips and tricks that I can share that may help you be most comfortable while you're braiding or how to deal with discomfort after a long day of braiding. So if your fingers are bothering you, your wrists are aching, your back, your feet, or anything that I feel that you can find useful as it relates to being comfortable as a braider. So let's get straight into it. We're like diamonds in the sky. first group of things that I want to discuss with you as it relates to comfortability is equipment, some of the things that you may want to purchase before you start taking clients or if you've started already and you've already started experiencing aches and pains, some of the things that you may want to make sure are within your reach so that you can avoid these issues. Um, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you have a salon chair. Some people make sure that their clients have somewhere to sit. Obviously, the client is going to need a comfortable chair, but we do too as stylists. We are up on our feet for long hours, especially if you're taking multiple clients within a day to braid hair. You're going to need a chair that you're most comfortable in, something with a good cushion and something also with back and arm support. You want to get you a chair that's adjustable, one that you can pump up to make yourself taller. If you're a shorter girl and you need more height in your chair, and one that you can pump down if you are taller and you need to be more at level with your client get you a nice chair that spins mine spins around in case you want to get to your supplies your shelving your braiding rack um one that can move you from side to side really easy one that's lightweight that you can lift and carry around if you need to move it around the client's head for any reason invest in a really good chair it's important that throughout the appointment we will be standing a lot when it's time to get the part just right when you're sectioning here certain times in the appointment you will have to stand but in between time especially through the main course of the appointment where you're braiding you want to sit down and give your back a rest give your feet most definitely a rest so invest in a really good salon chair that's first and foremost that's a lot the second thing as far as equipment that you may want to purchase that a lot of people don't think of is a waist shaper or a arch support um trainer this is one that i have i will link it down below as well i've talked to some of y'all before if y'all have watched my vlogs um about this in the past and it just helps with posture some people don't realize that a lot of times our backs are aching at the end of the day our feet our necks everything is causing us issues at the end of the day i can't even put the thing on while i'm trying to show y'all <laughs> Um, a lot of different things are causing us issues because we're not practicing good posture. This particular one has the different things that you have to latch on. I don't feel like doing that because it's time consuming, but you're going to latch all of those on. And it also has a zipper and you're going to zip them up. I always size a size down when I get any type of waist shape or any type of posture corrector because it makes it tight. And if it's loose, it's not going to force your body to be in a certain position. So I want to size extra small on this. Again, I'll link it down below. And these straps right here, you don't want to just get a waist shaper that goes around your waist. It's not one that's supposed to snatch your stomach in. It's supposed to provide support to your back. So you want to make sure it has this backpack looking strap on it. I don't wear it every day. I don't wear it every other day. I wear it every now and then. Whatever reason, I may get super busy over the course of a couple of days, maybe that third day in a busy week, my back will start bothering me and I have to put one of these on. And one of the main reasons why is because I hunch my back a lot. Because my client is underneath me, when you're sitting down, I have my chair pumped all the way up. I'm 5'3", I'm a shorter girl. So I pump my chair all the way up so that I'm over the client and I have that, you know, height over them to be able to reach their hair and get into the parts real good and because i'm over them a lot of times i'm hunching my back or i'm leaning over like this to get a good grip on their hair obviously i'm not thinking to arch my back and poke my chest out if my client is beneath me i'm naturally going to want to bend down and do that it's a strain on my spine and after hours let's just say a 10 hour day of braiding my back will be killing me. So I invested in one of these. My aunt brought me one and I ended up buying another 
wanted to size down because I realized the one she brought me was my size and it wasn't really snatching me in like that. And even though the straps are a little tight on my shoulders, it reminds me to, you know, just keep my posture upright. So I would say invest in one of these. It helps with your posture. If you're experiencing any back pain, some people say they don't experience that. It's something that I personally go through. So I thought I would share this tip with you guys just in case I'm not the only one. But get you a posture corrector slash waist trainer. The next thing that you're, wanna, that you're gonna wanna invest in are good shoes. A good shoe with good arch support that can help you get through your braid appointments. So a good shoe that I would suggest, and it's the only shoe that I'm gonna suggest, is a clog style shoe or a croc. A croc is a clog style shoe. It's just a name brand um, version. Y'all know crocs. But I have two pair. I have a black pair and a purple pair, and I wear them all day, every day, whether I'm braiding or I'm out in the streets running errands. My Crocs are my go-to shoes because sometimes you don't even realize that they're there. They're a very comfortable shoe. They're a rubber shoe. They're easy to wipe down. So when you're braiding in them and you're having um, different products that you're spraying, um, you're boiling the ends and the braids are dripping down, anything that may happen to get on your shoes, they're easy to wipe down, but they also have a firm, like a nice grip on them, a nice... Um, arch support in the shoe where they're very comfortable and they provide support to your feet that you don't know that you need. Um, doing hair all day barefoot versus wearing a crop, there's a big difference in the way my feet feel at the end of the day. Um, if you don't want to invest in a crop, meaning the name brand style shoe, if you're not into spending $45 on a shoe that you're just going to be working in, um, there are so many different stores now that sell dupes for Crocs, so duplicates. Five Below has their version, a $5 pair of clog style shoes, y'all. I went in Five Below the other day and I put a pair on. I didn't purchase them, obviously, because I already have two pairs of Crocs. But if you're on the market for a shoe just right now that you can braid in or work in and you don't have the $45, Five Below has them for $5. Walmart has them from uh, $6 or $7 all different colors they do have um clothing stores that may have them for a discount where you can catch them randomly for twenty dollars at like a ross for less famous footwear shoe carnival different shoe stores like that you can get crocs for a discount a lot of people wear them in healthcare, working in hospitals all day long because it's easy to wipe them down and disinfect them at the end of the day after being exposed to many germs in healthcare, you're on your feet ripping and running through the hospital all day so a lot of people you think that they're like a hospital shoe or once they became fashionable a lot of people think that they have to be worn outside as fashion but as stylist crocs or clog style shoes are very comfortable and very useful and helpful for us as braiders being on our feet for a long period of time so i would suggest that you invest into a good clog style shoe now we're going to talk about the hands and one of the main things that can help you with longevity as a braider just not experiencing much aching and pain over time or just getting through the day smoothly is stretching anytime you're putting your body up to a challenge where you're practicing things or doing things for a long period of time that your body isn't used to doing or may not do frequently stretching to braid is just like stretching for a workout a lot of athletes or dancers or people who like to work out they stretch before they put their body up for a challenge or they put their body up to a test you're going to need to stretch your hands before braiding if your hands are something that normally cause you issues you're going to want to stretch your fingers and stretch your hands because they're going to be cramped up I won't say cramped up, but they're going to be positioned in certain ways over a long period of time. So even though it may not feel painful to hold your hands like this, hours of doing this eventually is going to make your hands feel a little strange. Your, your hands aren't normally in that position. So anytime you're putting them in a compromising position, you want to make sure that you stretch. So there's different stretches that you can practice, two fingers at a time, a group of fingers at a time. One thing that I like to do is move my wrist. If anything locks up is normally my wrist. Hair braiding sometimes offers, um, requires a flick of the wrist where you're having to do certain things where your hand twists and turns. So just moving your hands around, wiggling your fingers around, bending them back and forwards, 
um, can sometimes loosen up those muscles or get the blood flowing in your finger to where all the blood is just flowing properly and it's not getting stuck in one position where your muscles are aching or causing you to feel uncomfortable. So I would just say practice stretching. This is something quick you can do while you're braiding. If your fingers start to ache, just start moving your fingers around. It's, it's because you need that blood flowing in your fingers. You're having them cramped in a certain position for too long or you're moving really forceful, really tight and putting a lot of energy into a braid it can cause a strain in your muscles and it can cause your hands to ache so I would just say keep your fingers moving um, at the end of an appointment one thing that I have practiced over time is an ice bath sometimes at the end of a day if my hands are aching for whatever reason I know I went above and beyond I will put ice um, inside of a Tupperware bowl and sometimes I get fancy if I have extra Epsom salt to stretch I'll put a little Epsom salt, some lavender, Dr. Till's Epsom salt in my ice bath and I'll soak my hands for a little while. It is a little uncomfortable. Your hands start to feel numb. You want to take them out of the bath, but I would say a good 10 minutes moving your hands around in that ice water will loosen up the muscles and get that blood flowing the way it needs to. So yeah, I would say practice stretching or practice the ice bath. As far as your whole body, when it comes to your back aching or feet aching, an Epsom salt bath is good. A nice warm bath with Epsom salt and some lavender will do it if your whole body just needs to soak. Run you a hot bath. But as far as your fingers aching, if that's your main issue as a new braider, I hear a lot of new braiders talking about their fingers bothering them. Soak them in some ice and Epsom salt and it'll feel 10 times better. A couple other things that you could treat yourself to if you're having a lot of aches and pains as a braider early on, you can get in the habit of getting a massage. I wouldn't say it's something that you have to do every month or even every other month. A couple times a year, if you have the extra money, I would say treat yourself to a massage. A full body massage is something that can really loosen up tension in your back and in your body. When standing on our feet or just putting our bodies to work so often for so long. A massage is definitely necessary. A foot massage is really good. I have gotten um, a couple of floating massages, a floating bath where your body is laying in Epsom salt for like a full hour. They put like 2,000 pounds, literally, of Epsom salt in the bath and you float on it. When you get out of the bath, out of the spa, your body feels brand new. You feel like you're floating. You feel refreshed. A floating bath is something really, really good that I would suggest. It's about $75 to $80, depending on the spa you may go to. Kind of pricey if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not stretching, if you're not um, practicing good posture. Taking those warm baths, if you're just constantly going, 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 and not giving your body a chance to relax or not, showing paying attention to the signs the early signs of aches and pains and doing something about it it can cause wear and tear there's nothing wrong with investing in a good massage or treating yourself to a good massage a couple times a year and also if you're not in the business of doing the ice bath for your fingers or you don't like putting different things in your bath water so epsom salt or different herbs and different things are not something that you're really keen for going in the bathtub you just take warm baths without all that extra i would suggest like ointment cream they have started getting creative and coming up with different ointment ointments and creams for braiders i haven't invested in any of that yet i wish i had it to show you guys but they have different creams that you can rub your hands and rub your feet and your body down with at the end of a long day that can help you relieve some of that pain some of that ache and some of that cramp but that wraps up today's video you guys i told you it would be short and sweet i just wanted to go through some things some small tips and tricks that i feel like may be able to help you feel more comfortable or fight that discomfort after a long day of braiding i hope these things were useful if you're a braider and you're watching this an experienced braider and you're watching this and you have any tips and tricks that you may want to share to help new braiders that have watched this video and are looking for advice to help them with discomfort please put those tips and tricks down below or if you're a new braider and you have anything that's troubling you any advice that you need as far as getting started in the game that you may want me to cover in the girl talk series let me know down below this whole topic of comfortability comfortability and discomfort after braid appointments was suggested to me from a subscriber so if there's anything that you do wish to hear me talk about let me know down below and your suggestion could be the topic for next month's video in the meantime i love you guys take care and i will see you in the next video